the winningest active coach in NCAA football, the winningest coach in Notre Dame history. Notre Dame is now 4-0. They're number seven in the coaches poll. They are number nine in the AP poll. Next up, a big one. They're going up against number seven, Cincinnati, on Saturday. Brian Kelly is my guest. Brian, it's great to have you back. How are you? I'm doing great, Jim. Thanks for having me on. Good to have you back on. So let me first start here. You're coming off that 41-13 to win over number 18, Wisconsin. It had so many different layers to it, but why don't we start here? It was your 106th win at Notre Dame. That breaks Newt Rockney's record. Before we get into the significance of that, I just need to know, were you able to celebrate that with a glass of Macedo on Saturday night? And if so, Brian, how was that? 2016 vintage of Masetto, to be precise. It was outstanding. Got a chance to do that with the family. And that's what keeps you in this business for 31 years. Take some time to to relax and enjoy it a little bit, or uh, it's it's too much of a grind. So, yes, was able to do that. Thanks for asking. No, good. I'm so glad for the clarification also. 2016, the vintage. And I want to ask you about that grind. But if I told you back when you were coaching softball at Assumption <laughs> College that one day you would break Newt Rock record for most wins at Notre Dame what would you have said to me back then oh my goodness I would have said uh, I, I'm I'm trying to coach softball so I can be a GA uh, and uh, in football that was the that was the end game there so hey, I would have said that um, if this gets me the opportunity coaching softball to to coach at all I'd be happy so that would be uh, I would have said you're crazy. What a journey. Brian Kelly is joining us. So when you think about your career at Notre Dame, I mean, do you think about specific wins or maybe do you think about moments in players, moments, for instance, like Chris Tyree's kickoff return on Saturday or how Drew Pine came off the bench and led the team in the second half? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jim. I I don't think the victories as much. You know, certainly I appreciate the victories because winning keeps you around here in, in this business. But uh, what I remember more are, are the faces, the relationships, the players, um, you know, watching them grow, um, you know, overcome adversity. Um, I think of Ian Book, um, you know, and, and coming back after a loss on the road against Michigan and winning 16 consecutive games, you know, after being scrutinized. Now he's the all-time winning as quarterback. You know, I think of those kinds of moments more than anything else. And that's what, you know, that's my, that's what keeps me driving in this business is that I get those relationships with the players and and those are more important than the wins. We're talking to Notre Dame head coach Brian Kelly. I get that. Like, if you were to go back to Saturday also in the second half, starting quarterback Jack Cohn goes down with that injury. Tyler Buckner, who had seen the field earlier this season, was also unavailable due to injuries. So Drew Pine does come into the game. What do you make of what you saw from him in a really tight game against a top-20 Wisconsin team? Moment's not too big for him. He goes in there. He's not afraid to play. And that's the thing I love, and that's what we talk about. Don't be, don't be fearful of the moment. Embrace it, you know? You know? You know, pressure is a privilege. You know, when you when you come to Notre Dame, that's a privilege. The opportunity to go out there and play, uh, and, you know, at Soldier Field against a nationally ranked team, and he went out there and, and wasn't tight, um, was having fun, and um, that's what you love about the, the the competitiveness of a kid like Drew Pine. Yeah, one more thing about him, too. Like, he was not only not overwhelmed by that moment. I mean, after that touchdown pass to Kevin Austin, he dropped that Conor McGregor strut, which I thought was pretty incredible. Remember, it's a guy who was maybe preparing to be a starter this year, but then he sees a graduate transfer arrive and a freshman arrive, and both of them get on the field before him. But what's it say about him that he didn't transfer, he didn't sulk, he did stay in the fight? Yeah, no doubt. Those are the... Look, th- those are the things that you want from, you know, your players, future employees, guys that 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 have that kind of, you know, grit and toughness, and that, you know, they're not going to be shaken by the moment. They're not going to be defined by, you know, one, you know, moment in their career. They're going to keep persevering, and so you love all those intangibles about, a, you know, a Drew Pine, and he gets a chance and, and puts it on display. So, yeah, he's he's uh, he's put himself in a position. Now where you know he knows he can go play anywhere, and 
the place he wants to play is here at Notre Dame. Notre Dame head football coach Brian Kelly joins us. Also, you brought in Marcus Freeman as your D coordinator, and he brought a slightly different approach from the one that Clark Lee had. So there was going to be a transition on defense. Saturday, you held Wisconsin to less than three yards per carry. You forced five turnovers. You had a couple of pick sixes. Does it feel like, it seems like it, but has that defensive identity already taken shape? Yeah, there's no doubt, Jim. I mean, it, it was a transition. There's no question about that. The first couple of weeks we were, you know, not really layered the right way in, in, in tackling, and we were doing some things that we hadn't done. You know, Clark did a great job, but it was a different structure, and this new structure is starting to come together for us, and it creates a lot of havoc on defense. And you know, our guys are really loving it. And they understand, however, that there needs to be a great attention to detail in their work. And you can see that they're doing that now in practice and their preparation is so much better. So on Saturdays, you can see it in their performance. All right, so Brian, I don't want to make it about you. I know you don't want to make it about you. I actually do want to make it about you because you and I have been talking ever since you got that job. I talked to your predecessors before you got that job. And you mentioned off the very top that this is a grind. It's a real grind. I would argue that the grind is... Notre Dame is as challenging as any grind anywhere else. You're in your 12th year now. It takes a grunt or it takes a real toll on head coaches. It wears them down, but you seem to be getting better as time goes on. How do you explain that? And what's been your approach? Well, I think I think understanding Notre Dame, embracing our distinctions, and keep fighting to break some of the rules along the way. Um, you know, it's a fine balance there, as well as understanding that you know you, you have to take time for yourself and and finding that balance between professional and personal um, requires a maturity in seeing it and understanding it. And I think I've I've reached that level, and there's a comfort there. And so um, I think understanding Notre Dame, the distinctions that are not going to be changed, and then, you know, there's, you can still keep pushing the envelope, and, and the university has committed to, to football. Our leadership and Father Jenkins and Jack Swarbrick could have been terrific to work with, and then myself, in terms of understanding that there needs to be, as you mentioned earlier, time to, you know, uh, take these wins in and, and these victories, and then get back to work. We're talking to Brian Kelly for a few more moments. They've got a big game coming up against Cincinnati. I thought the athletic did a really interesting piece which included comments from coaches that have worked with you over the years. I mentioned Clark Lee. He's one of my favorite people to talk to since he took over at Vanderbilt. He talked about how you approach what you say to the team right after a game. I'm curious, how important are those moments right after the game? And then what's your process for determining what you say in those moments? Well, I think they're as important as anything you do uh, relative to post um, competition and setting up not only what happens then but moving forward for the next week and so I want to be very careful that we're collaborative but yet w there's a consensus on what that messaging needs to be so you know early in my career I would storm in the locker room and maybe I would be a little bit too emotional and, and then I'd have to come back and, and retract some of the things or maybe you know rethink some things and, and it would you know, obviously affect our team. You know, uh, as I've gone through this business long enough, I know it's better to talk to the entire staff, get a consensus on what happened and what the messaging should look like, and 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 that's really served us well um, over the last uh, you know 15 years. Brian Kelly joining us. All right, so you're facing a top 10 Cincinnati team on Saturday. Obviously, you have ties to that program, as do some of your coaches. So it's going to be a talking point leading up to the game. How do you go about shutting out that particular noise so you're able to just focus on this Notre Dame team taking on that Cincinnati team? Yeah, so we do we do what we tell our players to to avoid the noise because it's 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 a distraction and we don't want to be distracted from the preparation and so our job is to prepare our football team so you know focus on what's important now and what's important is getting to practice here this afternoon and and really you know getting our kids prepared against a very good Cincinnati football team and deserving of their top ten ranking. Um, Desmond Ritter is an outstanding quarterback. Um, you know their defense creates havoc just like you know what we've talked about uh, with our defense so 
Um, this is an important week of preparation. We cannot be distracted uh, in any shape or form as coaches. So kind of do what we've been preaching our players to do when it gets to those big game kind of environments, and, and that is uh, stay focused on what's important. Hey, Brian, one quick follow because I, I absolutely love that phrase, avoid the noise, and there's so much noise. Like, in particular, what kind of noise are you talking about, and then how do they go about avoiding it? Yeah, so – you know, social media, um, you know, um, interviews, um, you know, local requests, all of those things um, can be a distraction, you know, to, you know, their preparation tickets, you know, um, we need more tickets for the games. So we really talk to our players about, you know, putting that stuff aside because, you know, th they will then affect your preparation and your focus on your opponent. So um, a lot of that is that through our mental performance coach, we have a full-time mental performance coach that helps our players with that so they can put that stuff aside uh, and really focus on what's important. I like it. Notre Dame 4-0. They're number seven in the coaches poll. They're number nine in the AP poll. They're coming off that huge win in Chicago over Wisconsin, and they've got a big one coming up on Saturday. Number seven, Cincinnati is their matchup. Brian, I appreciate the relationship. Congrats on that big win. Always good to have you on this show. appreciate that over the years. I appreciate it today. Always good being with you, Jim. Take care. Thank you. Good luck, Brian. Ton of good stuff in that.